12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you. It is Friday, April 10th. Welcome to your Friday. Not just any Friday, of course, it is Good Friday. Easter Sunday just around the corner, and we know traditionally a lot of you go out to an Easter brunch with family and friends, and if you can't do that this year, you can still enjoy some good Easter brunch food. We do have an article on KSAT.com, the headline, San Antonio restaurants offering family meals to go for Easter weekend. Yeah, so we have a list of them, of all the places. Some of them the deadline has already passed, so mm -hmm. you, it's too late. But a lot of them you still can order, and we have a whole list on our website. But for instance, uh, multiple locations of Bakery Lorraine, they have a full menu that you can order online and pick up. Yeah, Bubba Gump Shrimp, Carabas Italian Grill, Denny's uh, multiple locations as well. Also, Esquire Tavern, Evo Entertainment, multiple locations. La Gloria over on East Grayson. A couple of these you have to order by 3 or 6 p.m. today and do pickups tomorrow. So make sure you look at this online as you peruse everything and know the exact details. But Jason Dady restaurants as well, all yeah. of his are offering something. Yeah, uh, Joe's Crab Shack, Mangiano's. A couple of these sound particularly good to me. Max and Louis New York Diner has a Passover style meal that they're offering. And they offering. are also in HEB now too, right? I believe they are the one of the ones, uh, local ones that's uh, uh, now got prepared meals. One of your favorites, Papa Do's Seafood Kitchen. Papa Do is uh, also on the list here. Uh, the other one that sounds really good to me, and I want to read it, is the one at the bottom of the last page, Les Southerly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, they have the uh, the Pearl Eatery has a meal for one for 35 bucks, for four for 120. They include bib lettuce, uh, prime rib, fried redfish, sides, Texas Gulf Coast seafood combo, of crab, shrimp, okra, and rice. You do have to pre-order online by 6 o'clock this evening and pick up tomorrow between 11.30 and 4. Well, you go ahead and you do that one since okay. I don't eat seafood. I'm okay. going to stick with Perry Steakhouse and Grill. Okay. okay. Sounds yeah. good. You can get a three-course menu for $39 mm. per person there. All I of these sound hungry. delicious. I know. You have so many options. Or you can cook at home. Just remember to social distance, and we hope you have a safe and healthy Easter. Let's take a look at your rundown. New York City is reporting its lowest daily number of hospital admissions so far, but amid the cautious optimism... More than 16,000 Americans have now died, and here in Texas, with just over 200 deaths, officials are preparing for a possible surge in cases. A major hot spot in Chicago. Authorities overnight confirmed a second death among inmates at the Cook County Jail. City Council has approved an extension of the Stay Home Work Safe order. It will now run through the end of this month. In less than a month, San Antonians were set to vote on extending the eighth of a cent sales tax that funds pre-K for SA. Well, now City Council has voted to move that election back to November 3rd because of the pandemic. President Trump now requesting another $250 billion to help small businesses, but Democrats blocking that measure. This week, Governor Laura Kelly issued an executive order restricting the size of religious services. But Republican lawmakers overturned that executive order. Meanwhile, UTSA is working to find new ways to combat COVID-19. Two immunosuppressant drugs used to treat and prevent malaria were found in the compound. And the studies have shown it could also reduce the effects of COVID-19. Buildings like the One World Trade Center in New York switched the colors of their lights for the evening. The display was part of the Light in Blue campaign to honor essential workers on the front lines of the coronavirus pandemic. Here's a simple message from 93-year-old Olive. She needs more beer. A friend says Olive is staying home, staying safe, and apparently having a grand old time. Somebody get Olive some beer. <laughs> That's an Ohio doctor who is spreading a message of comfort and hope to his patients. He is singing hallelujah over the speaker at his hospital in Cincinnati. And awesome. Towards the bottom of the hour, I'm going to tell you about some great new thing doctors are doing because they're having to wear all the gear in ERs. Which and can to, be intimidating and a little mm -hmm. frightening for the patients. So they're doing something to humanize themselves to the patients. It's really a great. Let's go outside with live cam, and it felt considerably more comfortable out there. We still have the risk of some interesting weather, Justin? Yes, we have one more chance here to get some rain. It's going to probably come tomorrow, and especially tomorrow night, we could see some stronger storms. We'll talk all about that coming up in just a bit. We didn't get a whole lot of rain yesterday. It, uh, at the airport officially, only a trace of rain. But again, we do have some more chances there. Let's take a look at the radar real quick. Uh, we have some showers out there. Uh, these are generally moving off to the east and northeast. 
Uh, not much here around San Antonio, but you could see a sprinkle or two, especially there on the south side. And then as we get into the afternoon, we'll be watching out to the west, maybe for a few more storms to develop. Temperatures right now, 66 degrees at the airport, 65 right off, 61 Bernie stage, 66 in Hondo. And the forecast for today, Texas up 74. We'll call for mostly cloudy conditions, about a 20% chance of rain out west. And then uh, we'll be watching for some storms tonight. Also tomorrow night, we'll talk about the timing and also Easter Sunday coming up here in just a couple minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Uh, leftover uh, problem there at 10 at the Y here close to the downtown area. We will keep an eye on that situation for the next uh, 57 minutes or so. New this morning at 9, San Antonio police are investigating a shooting with multiple victims and several crime scenes. Officers tell us it all started on the east side with a call for shots fired near Houston and Walters just after midnight. Police helicopter followed someone from that area all the way to Bamsey. Where officers found the first victim with bullet wounds to the left arm, chest and head. Officers later found one crime scene in the 1900 block of East Crockett, another one in the 1600 block of Center Street. Well, police then received reports of a second shooting victim showing up at Santa Rosa Children's Hospital and a third one at Metro Hospital. A witness told police there had been an argument between several people about three hours before the shooting. Right now, investigators are still looking into the incident and they're trying to find any possible suspects. Police are also investigating a shooting turned crash on the northeast side. This one happened in the 8000 block of Mid Crown. It was just after 10 last night. Officers in the area actually heard several shots fired. They found the victim's car, which had crashed had several bullet holes in it, but no one was inside. An officer later found the victim around the corner from the scene. The victim told police she was leaving an apartment complex when someone started shooting at her. She says she lost control trying to get away and crashed. Investigators found a gun near the vehicle and shell casings on the other side of the street, but so far, no suspects. Well, a reminder, all city parks will be closed for Easter weekend. Walking, running, and biking trails will still be open, though. Easter camping, a longstanding tradition here in the San Antonio area, but city officials decided to close parks entirely to keep people from holding celebrations and gatherings. City parks will close at midnight tonight and reopen Monday at 5 a.m. For a list of all the park closures, you know where to go, kset.com, and you can just search for park. Governor Greg Abbott is expected to provide an update today on the coronavirus pandemic in the Lone Star State. That uh, press conference at the Capitol expected to start around 2 o'clock this afternoon. The commissioner of the Texas Department of State Health and the chief of the Texas Division of Emergency Management, along with the executive vice chancellor of Health Affairs for the University of Texas Health System, will be go joining the governor. Once the briefing starts, we'll bring it to you live on air and also online. In your morning headlines, winter apparently not over in the Northeast and a homecoming for a hero. An unusual animal rescue and another heartwarming story about families getting a chance to see each other. We say good morning to Mr. David Sears. Hi, David. Some of these celebrations are becoming the norm, and I wonder how long they will last even as things start to get back towards normal. That's a good is question. Is there ever going to be a normal like normal was before? What We're is going to have a new normal, I'm sure, of some is sort. Is there anything as normal? I know. Is there such thing as normal? I don't think so. Not anymore, for sure. All right, let's start with it. Is this normal? Hey, what is that saying? April showers bring May flowers. What does an April snowstorm bring? A lot of snow. This is Maine, and that's a lot of snow. There were a lot of crashes, including a jackknife 18 wheeler. A lot of people were without power, nearly 200,000 power outages. The power company says a lot of folks could be without power for a lot of days. There's a winter storm warning through this morning. That's a lot of stuff right there. Hey, non COVID-19 hero story. Larry Lord finally getting to go home. He's been in the hospital since last September. Lord was in a building that was destroyed by a propane explosion last fall. He is credited with saving several lives after he got staff members out of the building before it was too late. Six first responders were hurt. The fire chief killed Lord in the hospital until February, and then he was moved to a rehab center. Hold up cards, placards of encouragement, of optimistic messages. Uh, you know, we're really excited that he's finally coming home. A hero's procession will take Lord from Boston to his hometown, the town working on a more permanent way to honor all those who risked their lives that day. And yes, that is a goat running around Marcy, New York. Police and fire still handling rescues, even though there is a shelter in place. Apparently the goat didn't get the message to shelter in place. The goat running around an exit ramp under a highway. Firefighter calling caught the little guy and 
got him back to his owner and the firefighters tweeted out pictures with the hashtag, you have goat to be kidding me. <laughs> and finally, never really get tired of seeing the celebrations. This is Oklahoma, a nursing home there. Residents of that nursing home lined up on the street outside the facility, sitting a safe distance from each other. Then family members were able to drive by parade style. They were waving signs and just waving and just saying hi and just how are you? This was the first time family members actually got to see others since the stay at home orders were put in place in Oklahoma. I teared up a little bit. It just it's very moving. I think things we take for granted getting to see loved ones. Of course, they were keeping that same distance. That's what I'm talking about. Things like this. You're going to see more of this even as time goes on, even as we're able to get back to work and whatever we sure hope was. so you know this yeah it'd be the thing in the future just because it's it's safer healthier so, yeah and i know we'll dr Fauci said that handshakes probably won't be coming back not for or not shouldn't for, come back yeah. right come so, back. yeah so one of those elbows and, <laughs> we're gonna have to work on our make it look more natural right and just hi how are you <laughs> exactly or howdy howdy as we do down howdy. here yep Y'all have a great weekend. You Enjoy too. your Easter. You too. Happy Thank you. Easter. Happy Easter, David. Thank you. 909, 66 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. From a basketball superstar scoring big with nurses to a World War II veteran hitting all the right notes, we have a look at some positive stories that will definitely make you smile. A San Antonio physician will fight Ebola and now combating COVID-19. What he's learned so far about fighting the virus later in this newscast. And this year marks 25 years since the Queen of Tejano music was killed by one of her fans. And this weekend we're celebrating her legacy with a one hour special called Siempre Selena. After the break, a sneak peek of our interview with Selena's husband. skyrocketing. Her husband, Chris Perez, was in her band, Selena y los Dinos. Their future held great promise before that fateful night, Mar March 31st, 1995, when Selena's fan club president fatally shot the Queen of Tejano. Many may not realize two days later, April 2nd, would have been Chris and Selena's third wedding anniversary. Chris Perez talks to Jesse de Goyado about that, his late wife's legacy, his life now, and his hopes for the future. Not only was Chris Bettis grief-stricken, having lost a woman who'd been the love of his life. I thought I was done. If you think about it, when, when Selena passed away, that was it. Both personally and professionally. After all, he says... Well, yeah, she was super talented and an amazing person, but she was my wife. And I had to deal with the loss of that. I hadn't learned how to handle both, right? I wanted to be private about it, but yet I wanted the world to know how great she was. Her authenticity and amazing zest for life, he says, helped make Selena the cultural icon she is now. I think it came across and people feel that energy from her, even now. A successful artist in his own right, 25 years later, Bettis pursued a much different path musically. Even so. In a big way, I'm thankful and grateful for the role that Selena has played in that. Now, Betty says he relishes his role, meeting generations of Selena's still very devoted fans. How can you not, when you're feeling that somebody cares so much about somebody that you cared so much about? It's like you're sharing a special moment in time. Seeing so many who dress up like Selena isn't surprising, he says, but him? And I'm like, wait, okay. It's Twilight Zone, right? Further proof, Betty says that Selena's aura, her style, her music are indeed timeless. Here we are 25 years later and it's bigger than it ever was. So I want to stay on the ride with everybody. And thank you. Jesse De Goyado, KSAT 12 News. Don't forget our Siempre Selena special airs this Sunday night at 9 o'clock right here on KSAT 12. Check it out. It's going to be great. It is. Let's take you back to weather and talk about the chance of storms again. It's tonight and into tomorrow. Our next chance. So we have a chance tonight and then again also Saturday night. Those are the kind of the two time frames we'll be watching. Uh, there is potential for some more storms. Before we jump into the forecast, though, we're going to talk a little bit about Easter here in a second. We've got another junior meteorologist. Good. This is Julianne. Take a listen. Hi everybody, my name is Jillian Ramon. I'll be doing my weather forecast like yesterday. And as you can see, it is March 26th. And today is part cloudy, partly cloudy. And tomorrow I think it's gonna be sunny. And it is 77 Fahrenheit degrees. And that is all for my weather forecast. 
Wash your hands and stay inside. We don't know, want no coronavirus in here. And what do you think the weather's gonna be tomorrow? And this is my little puppy. Hey, say hi, Lola. <laughs> he is so cute, both of them. Sign her up now, Justin Horn, before I'm somebody else grabs her. Oh, that's that's a lot of cute right there. Yeah. Great job, Julia. We appreciate it. And we've got another special junior meteorologist coming up at 930. We'll okay. share that with you here in just awesome. a little bit. Easter forecast. We got a, plans probably to be outside on Easter, and I got to tell you, it looks good. Uh, it's going to be a little bit breezy, but temperatures will be warm. We're thinking into the mid 80s potentially. A lot of dry air, sunny skies. Yes, we'll have some storms Saturday night into early, early Sunday morning, but I think most of Easter is going to be great. So some good news there. Let's take a look at the rainfall from yesterday, and th th there weren't big numbers for sure. Uh, only a trace at the airport. About a quarter of an inch in New Braunfels, Forestville about 17 hundredths of an inch, Divine close to eight tenths. That was pretty good. Pearsall uh, close to an inch there as well. Uh, looking at the Doppler radar right now, we've got a thin line of showers here trying to work along Highway 90. Some of this may work into southwestern parts of San Antonio, but all of this is really, really light. You're not going to see much rain out of that. Uh, time lapse shows we've got a lot of cloud cover, mostly cloudy skies right now. 66 degrees at the airport. Dew point is at 60. We've got a northeasterly breeze at about 10 miles per hour. That's trying to usher in some drier air. So today is going to be a little bit cooler. Highs only in the mid 70s today. And you can see the uh, satellite picture shows plenty of clouds at the moment. 66 New Braunfels, 64 Seguin, 66 out in Hondo. Uh, even some 50s on the map out there in Rock Springs, 59 currently there with some clearing showing up out to the west. Dew points, as we talked about, trying to come down a little bit. We're still on. Uh, in the muggy territory, at least in spots, but these numbers may drop down into the uh, 50s today. So here's what we're watching. Area of low pressure off to the west. This has been sitting there for several days, causing all sorts of problems out around California. It's finally moving. It'll be here uh, Saturday night, and that's why we think our storm chances will once again increase. And here's what the future cast is showing us. So by 10 o'clock today, uh, a couple of showers off to the west. We could start to see a couple thunderstorms uh, there along the border and some of that activity that develops in Mexico could work its way towards San Antonio tomorrow morning uh, as a large cluster of storms. Now this is just one computer model. Not all of them are with this idea, but uh, something to watch. We've got rain chances tomorrow morning, then potentially a break in the action with just a couple showers and storms. And then as that uh, storm system from the west starts to move in, we'll get additional development. This is around midnight Sunday. And that could work our way early, early Sunday morning, but pre-dawn. And we could get some severe storms out of this. The setup is there, at least, to get some more strong to severe storms. Hail, gusty winds, uh, what we uh, typically see around here with uh, some of these stronger storms. And then by Sunday morning, 7 o'clock, we're clearing out. We shared with you the Easter forecast looking good. Storm Prediction Center does have us in an enhanced risk Saturday night. This is what we were dealing with yesterday. Didn't see a whole lot of severe weather yesterday, but I think the potential is there once again uh, to uh, get some stronger storms Saturday night. So that's a window we'll be watching. Forecast for today, mostly cloudy, 74 degrees for a high, 20% chance of some storms out west. Then as we go into tonight, we'll up those rain chances for anything that comes out of Mexico and moves in our direction. Right now, we'll put it at about, about a 40% chance here in San Antonio. And then tomorrow, 40% chance of rain, 60% chance Saturday night, and then breezy on Sunday, 85. Cold front comes through Monday, and much of next week is really quiet, but on the cool side, 63 Monday, 65 on Tuesday with a low of 44 degrees. That's so hard to believe. It's going to be nice. Yeah, kind of a, a, bit, a big swing there. Thank you, buddy. Yep. Right now we are at 920, 66 degrees. A 97 year old World War II Army veteran hitting all the right notes, how he bonded with his wife despite being apart. Night 23, okay. So a basketball superstar scoring big with nurses. Breast pumps turn into potentially life saving equipment, and a World War II veteran hitting all the right notes. CNN's Daryl Forges shows us some positive stories that will make you smile and maybe even shed a happy tear. One of the biggest needs for hospitals across the country right now are ventilators. So some engineers in Maryland came up with a way to help by retrofitting breast pumps 
The process is quick and cheap, $250 per unit. The group is hoping to get FDA approval soon and get these life-saving machines into doctors' hands. If we can have engineers duplicate our efforts across the country so that the ventilators can be used in other states quickly and manufactured there quickly, we would love that. Hi, Sam. Hey, Sam. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Oh. Golden State Warriors superstar Steph Curry thanking nurses. The all star FaceTime Shelby Delaney, an ICU nurse in Oakland, California. Delaney is a big fan. In fact, she wears Steph Curry's jersey under her uniform. The ICU nurse called it one of the coolest moments of her life. Thank you so much for. You know, just what you do, your heart, and, uh, and the inspiration y'all provide for everybody. Finally, check this out. A 97-year-old World War II Army veteran hitting all the right notes. Lou and his wife of 38 years, Jackie, live in a VA soldier's and sailor's home in Erie, Pennsylvania. Lou and his wife are separated by social distancing, but that didn't stop the 97-year-old from spending precious time with his wife. The two bonded while Lou played his harmonica. Play the harmonica was Lou's way of expressing his love for his wife as they continue to be kept apart, but are yet still so close. I'm Daryl Forges reporting. Another special moment, this one in Erie, Pennsylvania. You gotta love that. 925, 66 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at night, a bar owner pays her employees with money off her walls. And a family sets up a stand to hand out free toilet paper. Hallelujah. They will look at even more stories to make you smile. U.S. health officials feeling a little bit more optimistic. They say social distancing is working to bring down the number of new coronavirus infections. CNN's Whitney Wild joins us live to break down the very latest. And a local doctor is thinking outside the box in the fight against coronavirus, how he was able to take what he learned from fighting Ebola and apply it to the current pandemic. Check your hands guide right now. We've still got to clean up there at 10 at the Y here in the downtown area near the Fine Silver Curve. Construction 35 and Martin area. You are watching GMSA at 9. Antonio doctor who helped fight the Ebola virus is now combating COVID-19. RJ Marquez spoke with the chair of emergency medicine at UT Health and tells us what the hospitals learned and how they were able to prepare by watching other cities fight coronavirus. Dr. Ralph Riviello has been on the front lines before. In 2014, he was working at a Pennsylvania hospital where he was part of the response team that took on the Ebola outbreak. Now, as the Director of Emergency Medicine at UT Health and University Hospital, Riviello is helping lead the charge to fight COVID-19 in Bayer County. A lot of the lessons learned there in China and other countries, as well as other parts of the United States right now, has allowed San Antonio at least, and probably other uh, parts of the country to prepare for it and be ready. Dr. Riviello understands this is a very different virus. Ebola was short-lived in the U.S. COVID-19 has swept through the country. 11 people were treated for Ebola in the U.S. during the 2014 through 2016 pandemic. The way it has spread is different enough that, you know, Corona makes it a lot easier to catch than Ebola was. I think timing of things like spring break trips and other things have allowed it to spread more easily. Unlike some other major cities, San Antonio has benefited from having time to prepare for a possible influx of patients and gather equipment. If you look at New York, they're repurposing physicians because they're having manpower issues, mm -hmm. but a lot of these physicians haven't had time to get a refresher on how to take care of a sicker patient, a respiratory patient, uh, and that we've had that luxury. That shift has helped university and other area hospitals avoid a dreaded spike in the curve. We've gotten ahead of it as a region with a lot of our social distancing. I think our curve is gonna be very different than the curve that they're seeing in New York, Philadelphia, uh, and other major cities. But like many other local health officials, Dr. Riviello expects us to be in this for the long haul. Mayor Ron Nuremberg said Tuesday that the upcoming weeks will be the most difficult. Our peak is anywhere from a two to six week period. So if you wanna take the average or, or that, it's about four weeks. Hopefully we'll have the stamina to 
you know, have that stretched out curve. We'll be able to have staff who could, you know, respond to it where we're not all hands on deck right from the start. Riviello said University is thinking outside the box to fight the virus. All providers in the ER are now masked. This week, the hospital held a mock drill to prepare for a possible flood of COVID-19 patients. It's really strengthened the teamwork uh, that we display in our emergency department every single day. And I think anybody in healthcare will attest to the fact that we're there for the patient and we want to provide the best possible care that we can. I'm RJ Marcus. To see more stories like this, watch KSAT News at 9, Monday through Friday. It's such interesting stuff. Let's go outside with live cam, and then we're going to get you updated on uh, that cleanup that continues near the fine silver curve. We've had another rig spill earlier, and we have some more details. But right now, let's go to Justin. Hey there, guys. Uh, we just got the pollen count in, and uh, the numbers, well, they jumped up. Mold is now at 9,470. It's in the heavy category. Oak is at 3,610. It's in the heavy category, and there's a little bit of pecan out there, too. So both those numbers are rising. Of course, the rain is probably going to kick up the mold next couple days. Some cooler air trying to work in here to Texas. We've got numbers uh, right now in the 60s here around San Antonio, but some cooler stuff up to the north. 48 Lubbock, 51 Wichita Falls, 60 right now in Dallas. It'll be somewhat of a, a cooler day, especially compared to yesterday. We'll have some northeast Julie winds working through in quite a bit of cloud cover, too. You look at the satellite picture, a lot of clouds. Uh, tracking through South Texas right now. There could be a few peaks of sun today, but not much. Uh, a couple showers out there, too. Uh, most of this is very, very light. Even a shower there on the south side of San Antonio. This is moving off to the east. There is more rain in the forecast, so we'll have some chances coming up uh, tomorrow morning and again Saturday night. Temperatures, as we talked about, in the 60s right now. Forecast for today, 74 degrees, mostly cloudy. 20% chance for shower storm out west. And then those chances pick up overnight. We're going to talk more about that coming up here in just a couple minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. If you have the KSAT News app, you just received a push alert in the last 10 minutes with more details about this incident that shut down the fine silver curve near downtown earlier this morning. An 18 wheeler that was loaded with 45,000 pounds of grapes overturned earlier. Of course, they've got the cleanup process down pat. This kind of thing happens all the time. So typically what they do is they drag it a little further down the highway, then mm -hmm. back underneath so they can get it all cleaned up. And you see what's left of that rig on its side as they continue to clean up to offload those grapes and get that scene clear. Well, desperate times call for desperate measures. So a Southern Coastal Bar has upended a years long tradition so they can pay their employees. CNN's Jeremy Roth has that story and more in today's Take a Look at This. Dollar bills pulled off a of Georgia bar's walls are being used to pay its employees. Tybee Island's sandbar customers have been stapling dollar bills to the walls for years. But as business dried up, owner Jennifer Knox took desperate measures. She decided to take down the dollar bills one by one and give the cash to her employees. It took nearly two weeks to remove and clean the bills, and after added donations, bar employees ended up with about $600 each. See a family in Tennessee hand out TP in their community for freezies. With toilet paper being a hot and hard to find commodity right now, the different derpers are doing what they can to fill the need. The family ordered toilet paper through an industrial supply website and then set up a roadside table and handed them out to whoever was in need. And while the family is accepting tips, they're also offering a valuable one. Be able to give a gift to someone without having to take anything in return. That's the best gift of all, I think. And finally, a group of brainiacs from MIT has come up with a way to turn your house into a smart home using paint. It's called sprayable tech, and it seems like regular spray paint, but whatever art you airbrush actually becomes an interactive surface. Special conductive inks are used as displays and sensors and can control your television and adjust music, lighting, and your thermostat. And that's what I call smart art. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. As if house paint wasn't already expensive enough. No kidding. Wow. Right, we, we mentioned another uplifting story. This has got to be my favorite one of the day. Doctors wearing photos of themselves smiling on their protective suits to reassure COVID-19 patients. This is just such an incredibly beautiful idea. So, that, of course, patients, the only thing they see are the doctors all dressed from head to toe and everything's covered up. So this was actually a San Diego respiratory therapist who started this, Robertino Rodriguez. 
He said he wanted to do something about that, so he geared up as usual before his, sh before his shift, and then he did something a little different. He said, yesterday I felt bad for my patients in the ER when I would come into the room with my face covered in personal protective gear. A reassuring smile makes a big difference to a scared patient, so today I made a giant laminated batch for my PPE so my patients can see a reassuring and comforting smile. Oh, I just absolutely love it. All right, so there he is in his photo, suit and tie, beaming smile. As you said, small gesture. He said, a, small, a smile goes a long way in comforting a say, scared patient, bringing some brightness in these dark times. That's right. Not long ever you posted, other nurses and doctors started following suit, taping them photos of themselves smiling on their hospital garb. One ER doctor said, I didn't have a pre-printed photo or a color printer, so my Polaroid will just have to do. So far, patients apparently responding in a very positive way. One LA-based uh, RN said, even if it takes their minds off the chaos for just one second, I think it's worth it. She said the photos help patients connect a human and a smile to the walking spacesuit and the masks in front of them. Right now, it's just about 9.38 on your Friday morning, 66 degrees. I feel this is going to start catching on all over the oh, country, definitely. maybe even the world. Love it. Well, testing for the coronavirus continues to be an issue across the country. CNN's Whitney Wild will break it down for us live after the break. Reverse, let's check in with our friends at Cheddar. Hello, everyone. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar. Palantir still expecting their 2020 revenues to exceed a billion dollars. The Peter Thiel-backed data analytics startup benefiting enormously from government contracts of late. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has been using Palantir software to find more efficient ways to allocate their resources. Meanwhile, Microsoft offering workers an additional three months of paid paternal leave. This comes as guardians across the country look to deal with childcare issues that have all arisen due to extended school closures. And Google's partnering with New York State to develop an online unemployment application system. This comes as state officials are trying to tackle unprecedented strain on the state's welfare system. More than 450,000 New Yorkers have tried to apply for unemployment benefits just in the last three weeks. And that's your Cheddar Business to Tech Update. I'm Baker Bacciato coming to you from New York City. As Americans prepare for what's expected to be the peak period of the COVID-19 outbreak in the U.S. this weekend, health officials say social distancing is working to bring down the number of new infections. CNN's Whitney Wild joins us live from Washington, D.C. with the very latest. Good morning, Whitney. Good morning to you. Well, this Easter weekend will look so different because the official word is continue to social distance, and that means celebrating the holidays at home. So a dramatic change uh, from the normal experience over the Easter weekend. There is data to show that these measures, however emotionally difficult, are working. So the transmission data, this is really important, the transmission data from new hotspots such as Washington, D.C., Baltimore, Philadelphia, the attack rates there are closer to one to two per every thousand people. That is much lower than what it had been in New York, which was about seven per every thousand people, Mark and Leslie. Whitney, there continues to be a problem with testing. At yesterday's White House briefing, the Vice President, Mike Pence, was asked about the availability of testing. What did he have to say? Well, he admitted that the U.S. does not have widespread testing enough to make sure that every American can get tested before going back to work. So there was this just been question about whether or not it will take widespread systemic surveillance testing before Americans can feel confident going back to work. The president isn't sure that that's actually necessary to reopen the economy. Vice President Pence acknowledged that the U.S. is not there yet, but said he hoped to move in that direction. They're hoping to hit that moment. A timeline he gave for that would be perhaps this fall. However, there's nothing set in stone yet. One thing to note, though, is that Dr. Anthony Fauci is saying that an antibody test, which is also a very important component of this, could be available within days or weeks, Mark and Leslie. All right, Amazon also made an announcement about testing yesterday. Whitney, what was the latest there? So there is so much pressure on Amazon right now for a few reasons. One, it's one of the main places where people are going to get supplies because they don't want to go to the grocery store or go to the drugstore and risk becoming infected. Two, 
they still need a robust workforce there. And there had been some concern among employees that maybe the company was not doing enough to protect their health. So as a response to that, Amazon says that it's shifting some of its workforce to actually begin working on a test that they could administer among people who are working within Amazon, Mark and Leslie. So we'll have to watch for that and see when that that's, when that's available and what it actually looks like and how effective it is for their pretty massive workforce. Real quick, Whitney, Dr. Burks, part of the White House task force, talked about the newest hotspots around the country and there are still concerns there, but there are also some good news. Tell us about that. Absolutely. And this goes back to that data that shows that social distancing is working. So the attack rates in New York had been, as I mentioned before, but about seven per every thousand people. That sounds like a small number, but it's actually a pretty big number, especially when you compare new hotspot attack rates. Uh, again, Washington, D.C., Baltimore, Philadelphia, with an attack rate of between one and two per thousand. So the social distancing measures are working, even though there are new hotspots, they are less hot than the some of the former places. And, and that's a good sign as we move forward, uh, hoping to get this all under control, Dr. Anthony Fauci says, hopefully by the fall. Whitney Wow, CNN, thank you as always, and please stay healthy. All right, Whitney, have a good weekend. Justin's back with us now. We have another junior meteorologist, I think. I hope so. It sure makes me smile. Well, kind of, uh, but it, it's an appropriate uh, junior meteorologist. Take a look. I go. love it. Thank you, Mr. There Easter you go. Bunny. Yes, Easter, right around the corner. And, and as the Easter Bunny showed you there, good weather this uh, this week. Well, no, it wasn't Sarah Spivey, was it? It was. Too tall. It was not. <laughs> full disclosure, it was not Sarah Spivey. <laughs> uh, yes, but we will get some sun on Easter Sunday. Let's take a look at the forecast. Uh, blue skies and temperatures are going to be actually pretty warm. Uh, 66 degrees to start. We'll get some storms very early Sunday morning, but I think they'll be out of here and most of the day is going to be really great. 80 by noontime, 85 for a high. Pollen count for today, went ahead and put it in here on the graphic. Again, mold has jumped up. We didn't get a whole lot of rain yesterday, but it was enough to cause mold to jump up to 9,470. Oak's still in a high category. It actually moved up a little bit too. It's not a great pollen count. Uh, Doppler radar is showing us that we have a couple showers out there. Uh, generally pretty light. Uh, a thin line here stretching along Highway 90 over towards Hondo. A little shower developing there in uh, southern Medina County. We have a little shower here in southern Bear County too. Just south of 1604 there uh, near Somerset moving towards uh, I-37. This is all pretty light, but we, we could have a few showers this morning. I think the rest of the day is probably just looking at uh, we're looking at cloudy to mostly cloudy skies. 66 degrees. Dew point is at 60. Northeasterly winds at about 10 miles per hour. This is trying to usher in some drier, somewhat cooler air. You see the cloud cover here around Bear County. 66 degrees. The airport 65 Randolph, 66 in New Braunfels, 61 Kerrville, 58 in Fredericksburg, and 61 right now in Rock Springs. There is a little bit of clearing down there around Carrizo Springs. Temperatures jumping up to 70 there. And yes, we could see a few peaks of sun today. That's entirely possible. Here's the big picture. Uh, pretty quiet across the country. There is a little bit of snow going on. Uh, some lake effect snow there in the northeast. And you'll notice all the rain and uh, some thunderstorms down there in California. That's an upper level low. It's been sitting out there for days. It is finally on the move. It's finally moving towards Texas, and it will be here Saturday night. And that's why we think we'll have another window here for some showers and storms and potentially some more strong shower or strong storms. Uh, as we look at the future cast this evening, not much. A couple showers out there. We want to watch what happens out in Mexico. We could see some storms developing there, potentially crossing the border this evening. And one or two of those storms could be strong. And then as we get into tomorrow morning, it looks like we could get a complex of showers and storms working towards San Antonio. Now, this is just one computer model, uh, but that potential is there, I think. And so it could be wet tomorrow morning. We could see a break in the action and then uh, potentially another round of showers and storms developing early, early on Sunday. This is midnight and then working towards uh, San Antonio by, say, 3, 4 a.m. And we could be looking at some strong to severe storms in this cluster here as it moves through. By 7 o'clock, though, it's out of here. And as we talked about, Easter 
is looking pretty good, albeit a little bit breezy. Uh, severe weather. Uh, Storm Prediction Center is uh, putting us under an enhanced risk. So on a scale of one to five, we're at a three again here. It's elevated uh, basically for the hill country north and west of San Antonio. This is subject to change, but this is the idea now for tomorrow night. Uh, forecast for today up to 74 for a high 20% chance of some storms out west. As we talked about, those rain chances will increase overnight, uh, even here in San Antonio. And by tomorrow morning, about a 40% chance of showers and storms. The extended forecast 80 tomorrow, 60% chance of storms Saturday night, early Sunday morning, and then 85 on Sunday, sunny, sunny on Monday, but much cooler. We'll get a frontal battery in here and that really does cool us down. 63 Monday, 65 Tuesday. Look for lows to be in the 40s. It's going to be chilly Monday and Tuesday morning, guys. Thanks, Justin. 950, 66 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. Thanks for being with us on this Good Friday. We'll be right back. 9:54. We want to remind you, the governor Greg Abbott will be providing an update on the COVID-19 response here in Texas this afternoon. He will be speaking live from the state capitol at two o'clock. Also in attendance, representatives from the Texas Department of State Health Services and the Texas Division of Emergency Management, as well as the Executive Vice Chancellor of Health Affairs at the University of Texas. We will bring you the press conference live, both on air and online, as soon as it starts. A big rig spilled a load of about 45,000 pounds of grapes earlier this morning at the Fine Silver Curve. This is from 35 North I-10 West. They moved it uh, to that ramp back there. The cleanup does continue, but it looks like they're getting closer, possibly upriding that trailer and getting the rest out of the way. Justin. 67 degrees right now. We're not going to warm up all that much today. 74, mostly cloudy, 20% chance of some storms out west. But tonight we may see some development that uh, will work its way towards San Antonio tomorrow morning. So a couple windows for some showers and storms. Another window for possibly some strong to severe storms Saturday night and early on Sunday. As we wrap things up, we have another article from KSAT.com. We've been talking about staying active and trying to do things. Well, the kids need to stay active too. So San Antonio Sports has launched Stay Active, Stay he Healthy initiative for kids at home. That's right. The organization has launched the uh, Stay Active, Stay Healthy initiative. It includes a set of exercises children and people of any age can partake take in. Exercise start with a warm up, heat up with a workout of high knees, star jumps and push ups and ends with the cool down. With a parent's permission, participants are asked to post photos of at home exercises on social media using the hashtag I stay active. Again, that's hashtag I stay active. It's an effort to encourage students to keep up that physical activity since many schools will remain closed until at least May the 4th. And you know, I got to tell you, you know, I, I love my boxing classes and we can't have it anymore. Nate Bauer has boxing classes on YouTube and I did buy one. It's terrific. It's kicking your tail, you it's said. It's kicking my tail. I'm you can loving do, it. You can do all that at home. And my daughter's PE teacher has been sending them lists of stuff to do it. That's home. great, yeah. too. There are millions of ways to stay active. Yeah. Hey, happy Easter, everybody. Thanks for being with us. Have a wonderful weekend.